University of Bradford wanted to get involved with the face shield manufacture um, owing to the lack of PPE within the shortages within the NHS and within social care settings. In common with other institutions, we started 3D printing visors similar to this using a design um, off the internet. Um, but we soon realised that we were only going to be capable of producing these at a very low volume, sort of, uh, of the order of maybe 100 per day. Um, they're also quite, they, they're expensive, they um, are not of particularly good quality. And so we started investigating whether we could use another technique known as injection moulding to produce these on a much better quality and a much higher volume. So the project posed some significant challenges, not least because demand was so high for these pieces of equipment that we had to get it to market in the shortest time possible. This meant that we didn't have a lot of time for prototyping. So what we had to do was look at um, existing designs that were out there uh, in the open source community that appeared to do a good job and work to refine those designs to make them more suitable for a moulding process and to see if we could include any other key features that would prove useful. After um, a range of uh, creating candidate designs and 3D printing those designs to see what worked best, we were able then to take that forward and convert that into a moldable model. This required the use of CAD software to design the mold tools and also simulation software to be able to predict how the process was going to behave uh, before we actually started to make the molds ourselves, just to give us the confidence that it was going to process okay on our injection molding equipment. Once we were uh, happy that things were going to perform as we expected, we then sent the, uh, the mould components to the workshop uh, where the cavities were cut uh, to make it ready for, ready for use. We actually produced two mould tools for the project, one to mould the visor frame and a second one to produce the flexible strap that goes around the back of the head. So both these tools were produced in very good time, just a week manufacturing for each one of those. These were then uh, verified in our polymer IRC uh, injection molding laboratories. Uh, we were happy to report that uh, both tools worked with a minimum fuss, which validated the simulation results that we uh, produced earlier. And we're happy to report that we're now in full production on both the machines, producing a component roughly every 30 seconds. Overall, we're very happy with the design. We've produced something that's very, very low cost. It's very sterilizable, it's easy to recycle, and it also offers a few uh, features that, 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 that other visor systems don't have at the moment. So it's a very, very comfortable uh, device to wear. It's very, very lightweight. And we've included additional features like uh, ear saving hooks. So when people wear surgical masks, rather than hooking them around their ears, so they can use the features on the strap component that goes around the back of the head. This has been a very good project for the university. We've been able to showcase our product design skills, our ability to design for manufacturing processes that are able to produce parts with very, very high quality and in high volume amounts. We've worked very closely with uh, local providers to work through the regulatory process. I'm really happy that we've got uh, a component that, uh, even though it had a very uh, advanced timescale to bring it to the market, it's a high quality component that offers good value for people who are going to use it. Injection moulding offers considerable advantages over 3D printing in that in terms of the volume of production, in terms of the quality and the replication of a of design and also in terms of cost. Additional benefits include reuse of the material, sterilisation, recyclability and also the comfort of our particular designs. In order to get into the NHS supply chain, we need to, take, to pay a lot of attention to the regulatory frameworks as well. And to, to the point where we now have a CE mark, which allows us full access into these supply routes. 